became unhoused when I was kicked out by my mom right before my 15th birthday, a couple months after I came out of the closet. Uh, she was going insane of dementia. She died a year later, but, um, you know, trouble with the brain plus generally not believing in uh, gay rights, bad combination, I guess. I'm 19 years old, I turn 20 next month. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, I was born and raised in New York. Spent my whole life here, this city made me who I am. Uh, I think I always was able to tell I was trans. Since I was able to look in the mirror, I knew something was like deeply wrong. Since I could look at myself. Um, I came from a interesting home, to say the least, uh, where being myself was not exactly the safest thing to be. So I learned to push down so much of myself. I learned to give up so much of who I am just for a, a little room to be safe. And no child should ever have to experience that. Um, When you raise yourself, um, you become acutely aware of your own faults because you have to be like your own worst critic as well as your own best advocate. And it creates this awful complex of like self-hatred and self-confidence. Um, and I think once I came out, I was really able to let go of so much of that self-hatred that uh, now all I can really set my mind towards is doing better for myself and my community, which I'm really grateful for. Um, you know, after years of kind of cramping myself up and hiding, it's like, it feels good to um, no longer kneel to that way of life and to establish my own rules for myself. For starters, I would have to take the train all over the city um, and the state. I stayed with my grandparents for a while and I was on the Metro North mm. every day back and forth going to school in, at Brooklyn Tech until I like basically almost dropped out. Um, and started having to go to the local school. I just, I had worked so hard to get into Brooklyn Tech with the SHSAT and everything, and then um, being unhoused, I had to give it up. Because uh, I was in, in public transport for up to four hours a day. There's no way a person can maintain that and still do their homework, <laughs> you know? You spend so much time in survival mode that you forget what it's like to not be in survival mode to a point where nothing matters except where you're gonna sleep tonight and where you're gonna get food from. Um, and your emotions don't matter, your feelings don't matter, your basic needs, needs other than that do not matter compared to the absolute necessity of having a roof over your head. Um, not to mention being homeless or unhoused is so expensive. Like there's no kitchen where you can store your food. You have to buy pre-made food all the time. There's no way to, if you don't have a residential address, you can't get your mail, you can't get things delivered if you're disabled. Like I have a really hard time grocery shopping and like not having a place to get stuff delivered, not having a place where I can have pre-cooked food means I'm spending every penny I have on fast food and other stuff that's terrible for your body and your mind all the time. And that's beyond stressful as well. Well, I have um, sacroiliac arthritis um, and not always having a mattress to sleep on makes things so much worse. Like. I'm in like leg pain 24 seven. It used to be like I could sometimes not go with it with my cane places and now I need it all the time because 
like I'm sleeping on like pillows in my friend's kitchen or something like that and like it's not good for your body <laughs> um, and not eating right is also terrible for your body. Um, there's this common misconception, I guess, that like all the homeless and the poor have to do is pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and make money and save. When in reality, every last penny that I have goes towards taking someone to take care of my dog when I don't have a place to put her or my many, many debts that I rack up from borrowing money from friends and family who want me to be safe, but who are also struggling financially after the pandemic. Um, so like within two days, half of my paycheck, I do work, which is another common misconception about being homeless. I have a full, I have a full time job and I'm on disability. It's like by the time two days passes after my paycheck has dropped, half of it's gone because I'm catching up on other things and I'm trying to buy myself food and pay back people who I've borrowed from and pay the sitter for my dog. Like all of these little things pile up and then like I have no money to set aside to go look for an apartment or go put myself up in a hotel for the night. There's no really, there's no wiggle room. When you're unhoused, your budget is incredibly fixed. Um, well, first the disability office is a complete mess. Like the state will do everything in its power not to house you and not to give you money. Um, there's this m misconception that that's free money. It's not free money, it's our money. The state literally has a helpline, not a helpline, a hotline that people can call to report whether they think their neighbor is faking their disability. Like, how do you have that much intel into somebody's life? How do you have that much insight? Because I don't need my cane 24 seven, I don't need a wheelchair 24 seven, but I do need those things in order to survive. So if my neighbor sees me walking around or my future neighbor one day sees me walking around and calls that hotline and says, I don't really think he needs a wheelchair. I'm fucked. Like, that stuff is not cool. And like, I don't think it was what was intended when this country was created for the state to avoid responsibility for its people as much as humanly possible. I think that the state was designed to take as much responsibility on as it could to alleviate the people from these kinds of things. And something has gone terribly wrong in the process. I think my views have changed drastically. I think the way I view the world has changed drastically. I no longer think it's my fault that I'm in this position, but more so that it's an accumulation of socioeconomic factors that have put me where I am now. Um, I no longer believe in the concept of like property ownership the same way I used to. I think, yeah, everybody should have a place to live, but I don't think people should be owning property and renting it out. I think everybody should have a place to live. We have more vacant homes in this country than we do homeless people. Same goes for New York City. We have more vacant apartments and houses in Manhattan than we do people on the street. So why are those people on the street? And why are those apartments sitting empty when no one is going to go buy them up? Uh, we're having one of the worst housing crises. I think this is the worst housing crisis since the depression in this country. And I've really just come to find that I no longer have a lot of um, uh, well-intentioned feelings towards people who hoard resources as much as they can for themselves. Uh, I no longer am willing to say, well, Elon Musk earned that money. No, he didn't. First of all, Elon Musk comes from wealth a million times over. Second of all, all of those billionaires you see, Jeff Bezos, people with all of this money and, you know, for some reason, poor people will be like, well, he earned it. No, he didn't. He exploited hundreds of workers, hundreds of thousands of workers like you and me to get that money. And for some reason, all of that money went into his net wealth. I'm, um, I've come to the point where I've realized that all of the means of making money should belong to the people, not some CEO somewhere. Um, I used to think like, oh, another fee female CEO or a gay CEO, that's great. No, there should just be no CEOs. I 
think the biggest challenges that youth homeless, the homeless youth face today, I think the biggest challenges that homeless youth face today are a lack of understanding. I think people think that homeless people are this way because we can't keep a job or we get into fights or something like that. And like, there are so many people who can't keep fights and can't keep jobs or who get into fights that are 100% a million times better off than the model employee who makes every shift and does their absolute best job. Like, it's not about your performance in the workplace. It's not about your performance in the world. It's about so much more. Um, I think we face a systemic issue of property ownership uh, and property hoarding. Um, for example, um, Ivanka's husband, Ivanka Trump's husband, uh, Jared Kushner, bought up a bunch of land in Dumbo to rent and sell as condos and apartments. And what a lot of people who are from here know about Dumbo and Upper Brooklyn is that it used to be low income and it used to be mainly people of color. And now Brooklyn Bridge Park and the area surrounding it uh, is very largely white people and it is hardcore gentrified. There are like cafes where you can get a latte for like $7 on every other corner. And it's gross. Like, one guy owns all that land. And there are so many homeless people in Brooklyn that could be filling those vacant lots, fill, filling those vacant apartments. Like, I think we face an issue of the 1% and the people at the top just not willing to budge. And I think eventually they're going to be forced to, or we have to force them to. I think we should one, seize all empty apartments in this city and redistribute them to every unhoused person in this city. Section 8 housing is great, don't get me wrong, but the process is months long. I'm in the process right now and I'm still on the street, like it's not really going anywhere. Um, I think if in one swift executive decision all of the empty apartments were taken away from who owns them. Um, people were given a small stipend. The government could buy those homes, give them to the homeless people, and not only would our homelessness rates disappear, our crime rates would go down significantly. Our um, hunger rates will go down because when people have a place to store long-term food and prepare meals, they spend less money on food overall. Um, our illiteracy and lack of education rates plummet you see, like, like this one small step solves so much. That we deserve it somehow, or that we ended up here through our own fault. It's like, I was going to be trans and gay either way. I'm not able to control my mother's feelings about that. Um, I am going to be who I'm going to be, and my safety and health should be unconditional, as should everyone's. I think universal basic income for everybody is important, even people who already have an income and people who are already making money. I think once we set a standard for everybody to be treated with compassion and automatically being given the things that they need from the very start, could do so much. There's this misconception that we live in a capitalist society, but in true capitalism, everybody starts from the same place and there is no such thing as generationally inherited wealth, which is actually something that we took uh, in this country from monarchies. Monarchies are the originators of inherited wealth and inher inherited property. Um, I think that when everyone gets assigned a social security number, they get assigned a universal basic income, they get assigned um, housing accommodations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything they could possibly need for health and safety is covered by the state. That way, someone feels comfortable and safe enough to go make a living elsewhere, to go explore their hobbies and be members of society. You can't do those things. You can't experience real fulfillment in life without a roof over your head.
I think I want people to understand that I want people to understand that things are changing and that generational turnover um, has to be set to promote progress or we're not going to change. I want people to understand that um, you can't be economically right and socially left because if you're economically right, you are depriving the social groups you claim to support of the economic resources necessary for them to survive. Um, and I want people to understand that nobody with a net worth of over a hundred million dollars earns that money themselves. Nobody with a net worth of over a million dollars genuinely earns that money themselves. Um, and that The majority of wealth in this country is inherited. We have an oligarchy where a lot of our funds that are supposed to get redistributed to the people end up getting funneled back into the same rich that avoid their taxes when we perform government and bank bailouts. Uh, I think I want people to understand that it costs more money to make a tank for the US Army than we have money in our entire New York City education system budget. Um, I want people to understand that especially here in New York, cops do not protect people, they protect property. And that the protection of property over human lives has defined law enforcement and state authorities since the beginning of their creation and existence.